Welcome to Significant TV, Significant Stories from Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio today is Cassandra Georges, and she is a lawyer. She is also an arbiter and a mediator, and she is just a really phenomenal person. I've known her for a number of years, so Cassandra, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Your check's in the mail. Oh, <laughs> you're such kind I words. love that. As a business coach, I always <laughs> love that. Although, recognize that there's direct pay through, and you can just, well, okay, yeah, no, okay. another topic. Okay. <laughs> so, um, really, really exciting to have you here. Um, there's so many questions that I have, mm -hmm. so let me try to be polite and first mm -hmm. start off with this whole concept of mediation and arbitration. Um, why is that necessary if people can go to court? Well, in actuality, the vast majority, I think the last number nationally was like 95% of all cases do not reach a judge or jury vote. They are finished mm -hmm. before that process. So they're negotiated or there's some, there's some kind of process that takes them out of that. Mm -hmm. And so that's been my focus, alternative dispute resolution. Mm -hmm. And mediation is just a process where um, a third party who's not involved in the issue helps the participants, whether it's two, whether it's 20, mm -hmm. have a conversation and it's the participants who make the final decision that works for them, find a solution that works, that is mutually agreeable to all of them. Mm -hmm. Whereas arbitration is where the neutral third party, when parties haven't been able to come to an agreement, the third party is the one who tells them what's going to happen. It's almost like a private judge. Oh, I so, was wondering, I was going to say, you yeah. can be the judge and jury, <laughs> right. so to speak, without that title. <laughs> right, exactly, right. and that's, I think that's why there are many uh, people in my field who are arbitrators who come from the bench, so they're retired mm -hmm. uh, judges, mm -hmm. so it's, it's a, I enjoy my field, dispute resolution. <laughs> that, that is so cool. Well, take us back. Um, you actually went to law school here in yes. Philadelphia area, University yes. of Penn. Woo -hoo. Uh, <laughs> woo -hoo. So yes. after finishing law school, you know, what, what was your path and, and how did you get to where you are now? Well, actually, it started right in law school. I'm a mm -hmm. Philadelphia native, West Oak Lane, mm -hmm. East Germantown. Mm -hmm. And so I went to Penn twice. And during, uh, my law, during law school, I took the mediation clinic. This was in my third year, so close to getting towards the graduation piece. Mm -hmm. And it was actually the first course that really didn't bore me to tears. Wow. <laughs> and wow. I could actually see myself saying, oh, this, this is interesting. I'm getting to use my creativity and problem-solving mm -hmm. skills. And um, although I'm good at uh, being the, an adversary and challenging and ripping <laughs> someone a new one, I found it so much more pleasurable to be able to try to put something together than rip it mm -hmm. apart. And mm -hmm. so that through that program, you know, after taking the program, I talked to my professors and said, hey, this is really an interesting class. And mm -hmm. tell me, where do I sign up? Where do I find the, the jobs? And basically, my professors said, well, come back when you have a head full of he uh, gray hairs. This is basically wow. a, a retirement career. People, you have to have been doing this 20, 30, 40 years. And then you can talk about doing dispute okay. resolution. And, um, I'm not one who takes no for it. <laughs> okay, my kind of system. Yeah, okay, and, good. You know, because I'm like, well, everyone has started somewhere, so there's right. got to be. Right. Let me investigate. Mm -hmm. And so after just talking to people, going to networking events, and I know that's mm -hmm. how I've met you many right. moons ago, right. I met someone who turned into my future first boss. Um, I was at the American Bar Association, mm -hmm. that's the basically for the. Uh, nationally known for for the for the attorneys across the country that's their mm -hmm. organization mm -hmm. and there was an event in Philly and so I went and um, Mr. Creo he was mm -hmm. on the panel talking about how to be a mediator I was in the audience and so we sort of struck up a conversation because I was looking for a foot in the door and just trying to understand right. what the possibilities could be and he uh, had a he had a colleague who was moving away to get married and so it just sort of worked wow. out it was a really fortunate conversation and fast forward just a few weeks later I moved to Pittsburgh I remember that yeah to basically yeah. apprentice and t explore this uh, career as, as a in the dispute resolution being a mediator arbitrator and so working closely with someone who's 
himself, who had been um, litigating for many years and now had his mm -hmm. own practice doing all sorts of cases, personal injury, employment, uh, labor arbitration. Mm -hmm. And so I got the, you know, a front row seat to wow. see what it took um, traveling all over the state, all over the region, and helping people through all these things. So it's mm -hmm. a, you know, if there's a case with um, something goes wrong, a medical procedure, and mm -hmm. all those different elements, the hospitals, the lawyers, the doctors, the patients, and really coming together and to see how uh, that's really what touched me is to see mm -hmm. how alternative dispute resolution can help people out of really sticky and horrible situations. Mm -hmm. You see the pain and anguish. Litigation is not a fu warm and fuzzy place for anyone. It does not bring out the best because you're it's like, I want to win or something went wrong and it's your fault. And to see how when people could be, it seems so opposed and be in such conflict, to be able to come in and help them see a different path mm -hmm. and to help them leave whatever happened and move it forward and say, this is how I want to move forward. I want to not spend thousands and thousands of dollars right. in litigation or just right. all the, the emotional energy that goes into mm -hmm. being in court and you know growling at the person <laughs> across <laughs> you for months, if not years. And, and mm -hmm. that's really what um, keeps me going is that oh, I know I that I have that. Yeah, yeah. I, to have the power to help someone get out of that dark place. Mm -hmm. that, that's what's really exciting. So fast forward. So since since leaving Pittsburgh and working mm -hmm. and doing that, I've basically, because there isn't the one set path, this is more mm -hmm. of a non-traditional, you know, in law school, they didn't say, okay, if you want to be a mediator arbitrator, this is where you go. Mm -hmm. It's you're, you're far more groomed to, okay, here, go to this big law firm right. or just follow in this path. And, you know, I'm not just the just follow the path kind of person. Yeah. You can ask my parents. <laughs> I'll do what I do as I say. Um, and so that's sort of what since getting back to Philadelphia, it's been exploring how do I create mm. this this opportunity for myself and how do I help others. And so that's what I've been doing. So working all types of cases or, or all types of conflicts. So whether there's disputes between business partners or mm. with, between families, whether it's you know dealing with dealing with children issues or you know elder care. So there's co concerns between siblings as to what's going on with the parent. Um, roommates, criminal, you name it, I've probably, oh yeah, workplace, you, I've probably touched <laughs> upon it. Um, also, since we're in the political season, right. um, also doing facilitation, so helping mm. community groups talk about it, pressing issues, whether it's oh, on right. the block or in the community, and say, right. this is how we'd like to, the, our priorities to be. So, mm -hmm. you know, a few years ago when another was coming in, talking about how we were going to uh, priorities and change budget cuts. So what was, mm -hmm. if we have to cut down the budget, what do the citizens want the focus to be? And so being part of those conversations, say, hey, you have a voice. Tell us what is your, what are your priorities? Is it schools? Is it the streets? Tell us what matters to you right now and mm -hmm. what will matter to you tomorrow. And so being part of that conversation, this conversation really helps move beyond conflict. So that's what we've been, I've been doing. Totally cool mm -hmm. and fascinating, or interestingly enough, the name of your business is Above yes. and Beyond yes. Dispute Resolution, LLC. Yes. Um, tell me about the LLC. Why does your business have to be an LLC? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I was basically following as you're creating and learning and talking to people. So that's, that's really how I stumbled figured out, okay, I wanted to do an LLC because I saw other <laughs> mediators and arbitrators like, oh, you've got an LLC. Okay, so that's 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 mm -hmm. what we do, so that's what right. I'll do. Right. And as for the name, mm -hmm. it was really, okay, so what will I call myself? And looking, okay, well, alphabetically, we've got to start. You want, you oh, want to be early on, you know, looking right. at marketing things, like, <laughs> okay, so what? One, so I need something that ties into dispu alternative dispute resolution. You also right. want to be close to the beginning if you're in right. the alphabet and being right. searched. And then, you know, sitting out at a park one day, going through all the names, it just came to me. So yeah, above and beyond, because I'd like to say that I've, that's my expectation for the process, what I could mm -hmm. bring to the, to the mm -hmm. tables. Yeah, we're gonna w go above and beyond your expectation. We're gonna go above and beyond the issues that are weighing you mm -hmm. down. We're gonna go, I'm gonna go the extra mile to help you get to wherever you're going. And, Plus, it's early in the alphabet, so that's, <laughs> that's really how good. it came strategic. about. <laughs> totally strategic. So wow. that's, that's me. 
<laughs> That's you. So what do you see as the future for alternative discussions? You know, I mean, if it's, you know, a lot of people think that it's only court. Now you're introducing two other options. What's next in this whole field? Well, I, it's amazing to see how the profession shifts over mm -hmm. the years. So mm -hmm. five, ten years ago, to, to know how many people know the difference between mediation or arbitration or who would mm -hmm. even think that I want to talk to someone else aside from talk to my lawyer, we're going to court, right, I don't right, want right. to have any a conversation. Mm -hmm. So I think there's just far more awareness as, mm -hmm. time, um, as, time, uh, as time goes on. So... Um, so you see that continuing into the future? Yes, yeah, continue, yes, mm -hmm. as more people have exposure to it, as more organizations, whether it's the American Bar Association, the National Bar Association, or community groups like mm -hmm. Good Shepherd Mediation Program, mm -hmm. that's one of the ones who helped train me once upon right. a time, so it's I, just the awareness. Mm -hmm. But one, one of the projects I've been working on um, is just increasing diversity within mm. ADR, because, oh, I mean, within the, the legal yeah. profession, sure. I know that that's a whole process to, to make sure that women and people of color have a voice and have opportunities mm -hmm. within but the same can be said within alternative dispute resolution it's not exclusive to, to lawyers mm -hmm. anyone you know mm -hmm. with the training and the desire can go about to be a mediator arbitrator or, or just a neutral mm -hmm. and so that's what I've uh, I've, I've been working on to wow. to sort of op just as others open the door for me to right. help further open and <laughs> break those ceilings so that others know that one, this is a process that can be used. So even right. if you're an attorney and you're going to be in a firm or start your own practice, be the mm -hmm. entrepreneur, solo practitioner, right. um, to know that this is, this is an opportunity. But as well, if you want to um, serve as a neutral, to know mm. that there are opportunities. So um, I've been for fortunate to be working with many organizations like um, the International Institute for Conflict Prevention and Resolution, they have a national task force on diversity and ADR. So having um, you know, the senior executives of Fortune 500 companies, of major law firms, of universities, to be at the table and having conversations of mm. how can we change up the processes? Because in many cases, it's, um, it's just sort of the status quo. Well, who did we use 10 years ago to mediate oh, our no. case? And so Wait it ends up being the same few names and mm -hmm. the same few names who have been used by the same other people for many years. Mm -hmm. So to, to shake up the process and make sure others are aware that, hey, there are, there are so many qualified and able people out in the world, mm -hmm. and how do we get them, how do we connect, build those connections so that, that people know. So working with them, the uh, American Arbitration Association, which is a global leader in dispute resolution, uh, they have the Higginbotham program, so oh, basically known, uh, n named after a very prestigious local uh, attorney of color, mm -hmm. and they basically take diverse neutrals from around the world and sort of mentor and bring them mm. uh, up in ADR. So I was part of their inaugural class, one of the first people uh, in the program, and so working with programs like that and the American Bar and the National Bar finding ways to continue the conversation and make build awareness and look for opportunities to make change. So that's what I Very, think very mm -hmm. powerful. Um, and I love that you're not only helping your clients, um, but you're impacting the industry and mm -hmm. the perception and awareness yeah. um, that the industry exists. Cassandra, how can people find out about you? Well, I'm, I'm a local person, so find me social media. Uh, you can go to the website, CassandraGeorges.com. My email, CassandraGeorges at gmail.com, all one word, no underscore, no dots. Mm -hmm. Call me, reach out to Fran. It's That's a small right. world, it's so we can make world. things happen. It's I'm, I'm happy world. to help in whatever, mm -hmm. in whatever means I can and connect people who have questions. Or if I don't have an answer, I know many people who do. So that's sort of what I've uh, cobbling together. It's the importance of working together and sharing the information. Absolutely. Because that's what moves us all forward. That's true. I love it. And we are all moving forward. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's very <laughs> exciting, very exciting. Continue the work that you're doing. Thank you. Very important work. Thank you. So there you have it. Significant stories, significant entrepreneurs, and all without fighting. Imagine that. <laughs> Join us next time as we continue to discover and uncover significant stories.